That's just not okay. That's not okay. In Wairarapa, guide dog owners have found themselves kicked out of cafes. It feels like your freedom of choice is being taken away. And discriminated against. I can't get around without her. By businesses who don't know the law and don't realise that guide dogs are essential for disabled people to live their lives. Dogs have long been known as man's best friend, but there's a big difference between the average pooch and a dog that can open doors for humans needing help to get around. Reasons for needing guide dogs vary from epilepsy to neurodivergence, but we most often see guide dogs assisting blind people. According to Blind Low Vision New Zealand, an estimated 180,000 Kiwis live with severe to moderate vision loss, and of those, 18,200 use a fully trained guide dog. It gets pretty intense. It's kind of like these dogs are going to university and, you know, really learning, learning the ropes. Blind Low Vision New Zealand is one of eight certified disability assist dog organisations in Aotearoa. They breed their own Labradors and send them to volunteer homes for the first 15 months, where they are socialised and taught the basics of being a good dog. They'll learn basic obedience and those sorts of things. Uh, they'll learn to toilet on command, which is a very important part of being a guide dog. And, and again, be socialised in the environment. That's the most important part of that puppy raising program is to be able to go out into public, uh, for it to be normal for them to go into cafes and shops and airports, ride on buses and trains and that sort of thing. So they get that exposure. Uh, during that time. The puppies then return to Blind Low Vision's kennels in Manurewa, Auckland, for more intensive training. It's here where they learn how to be responsible for human safety. The things that they learn in guide dog training are, um, you know, how to maintain a straight line while guiding someone down the footpath, avoiding obstacles, avoiding people, stopping at all intersections. So we train them to, you know, stop obviously before they walk into the road. We train them to stop for all elevation changes, so whether it's a, um, you know, stairs coming up or going down, train them to stop and, and allow the handler to figure out what's happening in front of them before they take the next step. Once the organization matches a dog to their human, they become the guide dog's handler. It's the handler's responsibility to determine things like the dog's orientation and when it is safe to cross the road. It's teamwork. They really uh, rely on one another to get from point A to point B. So we ask our dogs really to ignore what it is just to be a dog so you know there's no there's no picking food up off the ground there's no visiting with other dogs on the walk um you know there's no uh, taking food from people any of that so we really ask them to ignore their basic instincts to be a guide dog so you, it, it's it, you know it's a big big job for a dog how many guide dogs and service dogs actually make the cut in training like what percentage are chosen for it that actually are able to continue being guide dogs because there will be ones that just like love to run after people. You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. There are vast differences really between guide dogs and most other types of service dogs. And that's mainly for the reasons that I explained earlier, which is the level of trust that we put into a guide dog. They actually have someone's safety, you know, um, uh, in their paws, if you will. Uh, with a guide dog, obviously temperamentally, they've got to be really sound. You know, we need these dogs who can handle just about anything um, and, you know, keep somebody safe. So uh, our typically in the guide dog world, we, we see about a 35 to 40 percent success rate from birth to, you know, actually becoming a, a qualified guide dog. So it's a um, yeah, it's a lot of resource for for a small uh, success rate at the end. But it's that's yeah, it's just the way it goes. Because guide dogs are so highly trained and so important to the safety of their handler, they're allowed to go anywhere they're needed, often into places where dogs are strictly forbidden, and sometimes that can cause problems. Recently, Masterton social worker Donna Lang was thrown out of a local cafe because of her guide dog. So I was at the counter and I was getting my food and I was just about to pay and somebody said beside me, and I have no peripheral vision so I didn't see them coming towards me, uh, very grumpily, can you please get that dog out of here? And I turned around and looked and I said, oh, sorry, you know, she's allowed to be in here. She's a guide dog. I didn't actually realise he worked there. Um, and he got grumpy and said, no, that she has to get out. Get that dog out of here. Guide dog handlers are provided with cards to carry on them, explaining the law and rights of handlers to take their assistance dogs everywhere they go. And I said, look, I'm sorry, but it's actually illegal. You can get quite a big fine for declining 
my guide dog and showed him the card and he took one glimpse, glimpse at it and said, no, get her out. You can eat outside. According to the Dog Control Act and Human Rights Act, if an individual is treated differently because they have a guide dog, this may be discrimination on the grounds of disability. Businesses or landlords can find themselves liable for fines up to $3,000 if they refuse service, housing or transport to a guide dog handler. That's just not okay. That's not okay. I, it's really hard being blind and travelling around with a guide dog. I know that seeing a great big dog in a cafe can be challenging for people but I need her and it's the law pure and simple. Donna has retinitis pigmentosa a degenerative disease which causes cells in the retina to deteriorate over time eventually leading to loss of vision. She's had guide dog Kenzie by her side for the last five years. I can't get around without her. I do have a cane um, and I was trained in using a cane to start with. But Kenzie, it's a bit like a cane is like travelling on a skating board and using Kenzie is like travelling in a Mercedes. You know, that's the the comparison. So a cane, I can move things, you know, you push it around, but it'll still go under a chair and you'll still walk into the chair, whereas Kenzie will actually walk around the chair. After discussions and texts, the cafe owner, Tanvi Patel, apologised for the incident. She said the staff member responsible wasn't aware of the laws regarding guide dogs and that she is now ensuring that all staff are educated on this. Patel says that she values all customers and wants them to be comfortable in the cafe. She also suggested that council should educate local businesses on guide dog laws to avoid problems like these occurring again. But unfortunately, Donna is not alone in being subject to discrimination. Joe Torcomo and partner Terry Fraser also claim to have faced discrimination from Strada. You feel vulnerable? Yeah. Yeah, disempowered. It feels like your freedom of choice has been taken away. And also a breach of your human rights. Mm. So that's why it's really important to, to be able to deal with those situations because if you're not prepared, it can be humiliating. Unlike Joe, Terry is not blind but she has faced discrimination on behalf of her partner. I would just like to say to Strata, learn more about the legal rights of a guide dog and don't tell anybody with a guide dog that they have to make an appointment before they can go in to have a coffee. I got told that when I rang up, or you need to, uh, if you want to come for coffee, book a table. And I just said, no, I don't need to do that. So, yeah, you know, we can go anywhere. We don't have to make bookings to go for coffee. Yes, for dinner and for lunch, I get it, but not just during the day. Joe has suffered visual impairment from Lieber's optic atrophy since he was 19 and has had his guide dog Anki for 10 months. The couple say, on the whole, Greytown's community has been hugely supportive of Anki, but when travelling further afield, they have had 11 confrontations so far even when she has her certified vest on. Every day he wakes up knowing that he's got a visual disability um, and he goes out with Anki, who is his eyes, his life, his support, enabling him to be independent and to be faced with these challenges has been quite a journey for him and myself because often people do not see Joe or talk to Joe, they direct their conversations at me. So I'm an advocate as well, and yet I'm not the handler of the guide dog. So the other um, cues that I miss is, is the body language. However, I do pick up on the tone of the, the voices when we go into these businesses, and it can be the difference between me um, communicating with these people or being defensive. Because when, when my, in my experience, when people have said no, you can tell straight away that they're not willing to listen. And that's one of the most disappointing um, things that we've had when going into, into businesses. Blind Low Vision says in the instance of confrontation, its first priority is education. The organisation receiving several complaints a month for these kinds of scenarios. It usually comes out of ignorance of the law and just a misunderstanding. There are also cultural differences that often lead to to these types of experiences. Um, you know, people coming from other parts of the world where dogs are not seen the way they're seen here in New Zealand can have an effect on whether they think a dog is allowed in, inside a cafe or not. What is an example of where rejecting a service dog might negatively impact the person using the service dog? There are so many negative impacts. Uh, 
you know, if you can imagine being in a cafe and you've gone up to the counter to order a coffee and some, and the person there asks you to leave, you know, first of all, it's humiliating. Um, you know, suddenly this person is being um, pointed out as, as someone who doesn't belong, who isn't welcome. Um, so, so there's that there's, there are other times that it can actually affect people's livelihood if they're expecting a taxi to pick them up and the taxi rolls up, sees they have a guide dog and, and refuses service, that person maybe doesn't get to work on time, you know, and if this is a, a constant for them, um, same with buses, you know, I, I personally experienced this as someone who trains guide dogs, I had a bus pass me by when they saw I had a guide dog. You know, so you're standing there stranded. That can affect your safety. Donna has one final message for anyone questioning a guide dog's place. Everybody's pushing a wheelbarrow. You don't know how heavy that wheelbarrow is. Be kind. You know, even if you don't know the law and you don't think that dog should be in there, treat me with some respect and then find out what the law is. Meanwhile, Blind Low Vision says it's committed to working with the cafe so they better understand the law surrounding guide dogs. Ellie Franco. Local Focus.